Today, uh, the title is, And God Said. I, I, I want to, to present this, um, this message today. A segment of it I explained on yesterday, but I want to go full-throated on it today. Um, and I want to put it to, for those of us who follow the ministry closely um, as a revelation, something that uh, Esther Bennett or others will uh, put into the catalog or uh, Evangelist Brown who has kept a, a record of the um, what we believe to be miraculous or certainly God-centered events uh, in the ministry over the years. Um, and we want to categorize uh, today's teaching um, as, a, as a revelation um, and as a mega one with respect to um, the, the purposes of Atla, uh, the, the ministry, the work that God has given to us, the vision of Atla, uh, and the call of righteousness. We want to be able to... Um, we want to be able to put it in the in the terms of a revelation. So, uh, for our students and teachers, and for Bennett and and others, as we as, as said, as uh, Evangelist Brown, you'll make note of this that this is being presented today. Uh, this message and God said, and we covered a part of this on yesterday, but we want to formalize it today. Um, everything that has been made in the totality of the universe, uh, except for man, was spoken into existence. Now, I'm going to demonstrate that in 25 verses coming out of chapter 1 of the book of Genesis. But I want you to think about that for just a second. Everything that is in existence now, everything that has a, a physics or in, that can be found on the element chart or everything, including uh, the measurement of time, which may not necessarily be something that can be found as a physics or something that can be found on the element chart. But when we consider with the totality of all things that we interact with, um, everything was made simply by the spoken word of God the only thing that was not made by the spoken word of God was man. Now, I'm going to read that, and, I, I, and that within itself uh, is the beginning, uh, the introduction to the power of the revelation, and we'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But man was created of the spoken word that, man was created of the earth that was spoken by God. But everything else, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the engineer to bring up Genesis chapter 1, starting at verse 1, and we're going to read it, um, oh, I'm going to read it, and you can read along with me. I will, the, the, what we want to do in demonstrating this revelation, and we believe that this revelation, the word that we're going to discuss with you, uh, the revelation that we're going to bring to you um, I have not in my studies. Um, I, I, I have studied extensively uh, theology and graduated from Union Theological Seminary with the approval of being a Master of Divinity by that school. And I have been a preacher for 40 years. I've listened to many sermons and I've read many supplementary books and I've, I've read part of the Talmud. I've gone through a, a, a large number of other ancillary religious ideologies or ideas or faiths. I, I've never heard anyone express uh, what I'm going to express in terms of this revelation. Or well, I'm not here to say that distinctively that it, this is a this is a first revealing of it. I don't know. It very well may be. As far as I know, this is the first revealing of this revelation that I'm going to uh, explain to you today. And I've explained a part of it already. Um, and that is is that everything that's in existence that we find that has a physics or physical comp comp composition, or is on the element chart, or we interact with. Um, the um, Except for man was created simply by God speaking it into, into existence. 
that God took no materials to do anything that he has made except for man. God used no other materials. There were no materials that God pulled from to make man, to, to, to make creation, except for man. Okay. So I've asked the engineer to bring up Genesis chapter 1, and he's going to bring it up for us. And starting at verse 1, at, we're, we're going to read. Uh, and it says that in the beginning, um, God created the heaven and the earth, singular. Verse 2, and the earth was without form, and we can discuss that another time, and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, we, we will discuss that in, in more detail, but verse 3 says, And God said, and that's the title of today's lesson, And God said, Let there be light. After God spoke the earth into existence, God said, God said, He did not take any chemicals, He did not take any materials. He did not take any substance, but he simply said, let there be light, and bam, there was light. Verse 4, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness that had preceded the light in the first chapter, in verses 1 and 2. And God called the light day, and he called the darkness night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, we've got the first day and we've got the first creation. Now, notice there is nothing that God is pulling from in terms of pre-existent materials to make or to create any of this. The only thing that God is using is his word. And you're going to notice through the next 25 verses that the Bible will clearly say, and God said. And God said, and God said, and things existed. So I, I want you to focus on the fact that all things that are in creation, though they have a physical, substantive, material composition, their genesis, they were born out of the spoken word of God with no preexistent materials being used. All right, verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. All right, so we have the second, God said. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. All right. Let's go to the third, God said. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And verse four, verse 11, and God said, now, we're now into our fourth, God said, right? There, is no, there have been no materials. God has not drawn from anything in the storehouse. God has not gone to the warehouse. God has not gone to any place of any materials, a substance, or any physical uh, items in order to be able to now get the heavens, get the earth, get the waters, get the light, get the darkness, all of that is simply flowing out of the mouth of God, and it becomes a physical, measurable reality. Okay, the fourth God said, and God said, let the earth, that's now in existence, bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. God said... Let there be fruit trees, let there be plants or vegetations, if you will. But the genesis of the vegetation, God said, let the earth bring forth them. So again, they, are, they came from the spoken word of God. 
Now, the earth has become central in the processes going forward. And the earth brought forth, as God commanded, grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself and after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. All right, let's get to the fifth God said. And God said, now there are all of these things. Now we got the earth, we got the trees, we got the fruit trees, we got the grass, we got the herbs, we got the light, we have the darkness, we have the waters. All that's there. Now were it to stop there, that would be all we would have. It, the creation process didn't stop on the third day. We're going now to another day. Uh, but if we just pause for just a moment, all of what has happened now has happened simply because God said it. All that has happened has happened simply because God said it. There were no pre-existent materials being used or deployed. All right, verse 14. And God said, which is the title of our teaching today, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for light in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament, which is the heaven, firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, so now we got we got four days. We got five. God said and we see the lights being reorganized. Now, God said, let there be light. Now the light is being administrated, a lesser light, a greater light. Lights within the firmaments and a, a key verse for another subject matter that the astrologists um, would use and and, to, and the astronomers as well, um, because God set the lights, the stars in the in the heavens for seasons and for signs, giving some credibility to the study of. Uh, of astrology, but more specifically, I would like to say to astronomy, but both of those are valid sciences, according to what God has said about the stars, that they're there for, they're, they're there for signs and they're there for seasons. So if someone asks you, what is your sign? They're generally talking about what stars govern the time or season of your birth. That's another subject matter, but I thought I would just kind of chime it in uh, to give some validity to some other things that we've taught in the past or things that we would teach in the future. Where, where we're at now, fifth God said, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life. Now God is speaking and the waters are crystal clean. There have no Anything in them, not even algae, I think, at this point. Well, maybe they have algae or algae or plants. But God said, let the waters bring forth the moving creature. Everything from the minnow fish to the great whale that have life. And not just that, while he's on that matter of the waters and said, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the heaven. I'm sorry, in the open firmament of the heaven. So now God is speaking in this fifth, God said, he's speaking both the fish and the fowl. And he's speaking them into existence. Now I want to pause for just a second and again and say to you that what I'm expressing to you is a revelation. Now, thus far, you, you already know this, but you, maybe it has never been explained to you uh, in these terms that everything that's in existence from the fish to fowl to the trees, the rivers, the seas, the sun, the stars, the moon, the earth itself came from no pre-existent, if you will, materials or components. But 
God simply said out of his mouth, let there be. And Moses, right in the book of Genesis, makes it implicit that each one of the creation processes that now give us a totality of our universe, our interaction with fish or fowl or with trees or with rivers or with waters or with stars or with moon or with sun, simply came by God speaking. And God said, and it was so. All right. So I want to be able to say that, and, and I, I want to point out that this information, as far as I am concerned, is a revelation. If some other theologian has brought forth the details of this information in times gone by, in terms of the specifics and the way I'm going to present it, uh, that only man was not spoken into existence, but was taken from materials already in existence. If some other theologian has made that possible, then I will certainly bow to the accuracy of that. But as it stands right now, my studies, they have not revealed to me any other theologian or person uh, that has uh, given uh, this type of, if you will, description and understanding of the, the formation of man and the power of God's word in terms of the things that have now exist simply because the word of God spoke them into existence. So we'll go back now to the, uh, the verse 15 of where we were in just a moment. The engineer will bring up the chapter again uh, where, where, where we were reading just a moment with respect to the great waters. Where, or is it, was it verse 21? All right. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. And 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 after we God speaking to the waters and to the uh, and to the uh, that that you bring forth life, moving creatures and the fowl, and God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. Now, there's a process here whereby the uh, animated life and, and mammal life is now being introduced into the process. For certainly trees have life and plants have their life as well. But, but we're now looking at animated life and mammal life, where now God is saying that to those entities to be fruitful and to multiply. And to fill the waters and the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And, uh, Mr. Engineer, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creature, the living creature, rather, after his kind. Now, the cow, the ox, the bull, the sheep. And everything creeping upon the earth is going to come into existence because God said that they should happen. The cattle, the creeping thing, the beast of the field after his kind. And it was so. God said it and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. All right, we have the fifth day, and we have the sixth, if you will, God said. And so far, man has not been created. We're going to the sixth day, uh, but up until the fifth day, the cattle is in place, the trees, the stars, the moon, the firmaments, the heaven, the waters, the fowl, the, 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 the fish, uh, everything is now in order. The fifth day has come. We're five days into the process. And all that has taken place so far, all God has done so far is say, let there be. And it was so. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over all the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man 
in his own image. Uh, and the image of God created them, male and female created them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God says, behold, I've given to you. And I think where we want to do here is that we want to look at man does not come from God said. God, God has got and God said, behold, I've given to you. But man himself does not. God orders all things to be subject to man. But man was created in the image and the likeness of God. There was no image in terms of our understanding of the sun before God said, let there be light. I don't know what pre-existent pre-creation looked like, but there, there was no image of, a, of, a, of, of, I suppose, a tree. I don't know, but maybe the, the trees around the heaven, perhaps they were. But man distinctively did not come as a result of the spoken word of God. But more specifically, there was a template. And the template for man was the image and likeness of God himself. And, and, and he came, as we know, from the, from, the, from the earth that had already been formed. And then God said, behold, I've given after man was created you every bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree that is in that which that the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for me and every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to every creeping thing that creep upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given uh, every green herb for me. And it was so. And God saw that the thing that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we have the ending of chapter one of Genesis. So we have the, 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 the seventh, if you will, God said. Uh, I'm sorry, the, 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 we have the, the, the creation of man on the sixth day, pardon me. And we have God then making man out of the out of the dust of the earth, of which we know that he is that he was drawn from, but made in the image that the template there was something like man before God created him. God, the apple was created in, in I, I got a, I guess out of whole cloth, to use an expression. Um, and I suppose that heaven, um, now that we understand it, uh, has similarities of trees and rivers. But you have to remember that in terms of what Genesis says, there was no heaven before in pre-existence. Heaven itself is a part of creation it, that wherever God dwelt, before he said, let there be light, could not be designed, designated as heaven. Heaven was created. God spoke heaven into existence. God spoke heaven into existence, and he spoke earth into existence, and he spoke the firmament and the waters to separate the two. Now in heaven, we might find there's a crystal river, or there's a tree, the leaves of the tree, and heaven are good for the healing of the nation, but you have to remember that there was no template of a tree or a river pre-existence or pre-God speaking heaven to existence. Now, heaven and earth were both spoken into existence before God said, let us make man in our image. So the only thing that was not made from, uh, from, from, pre from, from totally non-existent items was man. But the uniqueness, as we further point to, of our revelation is that the template for man was God. By that, the image that man was made in, the structure that man's physics appear, uh, uh, reveal, reveals the image and likeness of God. For God said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. He didn't say, let us make a fish in the image of fish that existed before we said, before God said, let there be light. He didn't say, let us make a whale or let us make a tree of a tree that existed before the creation. And keep in mind, 
Though we know that heaven has trees and heaven has rivers, like earth has trees and rivers, they had just been separated by the firmaments. But the trees and rivers in heaven are no more or no older than the trees and rivers on earth. They were both spoken into existence at the same time. So we have these now two parts of the revelation. One is that everything was spoken, everything that was created, except for man, uh, by non-existent and by simply God speaking the word. Item number two of our revelation is that though man was taken from something already in existence from creation of the first five days of creation, the template for man was the image and likeness of God, which nothing else existed in that which was created prior to God said, let there be light. I, I find this extraordinarily fascinating. I'm going to now bring forth, uh, after I take a brief break, uh, the, the second or the third component of what I'm considering to be a, a mighty revelation. And uh, it's just a very exciting time for the ministry. And I want to take the time to just give a, a, a word of thanks to all of the members of the Outlaw World Missionary Church that have, uh, over the years, that have stood, supported, and prayed Given me the freedom to be a pastor, give me the freedom to teach the word of God, not force me to bring a word that they like, not force me into any cultural identity, but give me the freedom to be free to speak God's word and God's truth, the freedom to seek his face. They have willingly and lovingly financially supported, which brings me to the freedom of, and the time of prayer that I can interact with God to bring what I'm now considering such an extraordinary, powerful, powerful revelation and word that is now being uh, given through the Atla ministry. So I want to thank God in that, that prayer, what my eyes opened that I've just prayed. I'm going to take a bit of a break and I'll be right back. In front of you, there is a crystal ball. What do you see? Very dark, but once the dark itself has done as done in the days of the Bible, in the beginning of creation, has darkness itself cannot maintain. It, 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 it is a not a consistent, is not eternal. It just isn't. It just isn't. And in that ball, I see the darkness. But once that darkness fades and it no longer has its power, light will flood and flourish humanity. And Jeremy, I'm glad you asked the question, because I think a large part of humanity, of uh, the unity of humanity on planet Earth has to do with the dark black man finally realizing where he needs to kneel and pray, what he needs to do in order to be able to integrate himself into society. And as a result of that, uh, it'll bring global global peace in many ways. Listen, here in America, politics in America is always by black and white. Republican Party, Democrat Party. Democrats got the black people on their side and Republicans don't. And all the issues are around race. But once that darkness, that blackness, that is removed as an, as an existential, if you will, part of our existence, light will come. But it isn't going to be easy, and I'm not sure how long. The hair on my arms, Pastor Manning, is standing up. <laughs> Just from listening to that. It's a great way to end our conversation. I know that you have to, I know that you have to leave. Um, may I say that you are a true gentleman, uh, and it's an absolute pleasure uh, chatting to you.
All right, we, we are here today um, in our second segment here of what I am now professing to be, and I want to be recorded and cataloged in what our ministry has accomplished over the past 40 years as a, a, a another revelation, as another revelation that God has given to us of the many revelations and visions that God has given to us, and all of them are biblically rooted um, and can be double tested or checked by the authority of the word of God. And uh, we are sharing this now uh, with the understanding that perchance some of the theologian has at some earlier date uh, given the exact information as we are now exposing it uh, or expounding it. And certainly if we find it to be so, uh, then we would, we would acknowledge that and bow down to a, this previously being discovered. Uh, but in my, my 40 years of study, I, I've not heard anyone express it or explain it. Um, and so we're going to present it, uh, the urgency of it, uh, and the importance of it as, as a revelation. And we've gone through the first two components of it. Number one is that everything that was created that's in creation that we interact with, that has substance, that has physics, including time, um, the, uh, was created uh, by simply by God saying, let there be. And God said, and it was so. The only thing that's in creation that we interact with of the vastness of the totality of all things in creation was man himself. That man was not spoken from, man was not created by the spoken word of God, but man was created from the earth that was spoken by God. So man himself has his substance, his material, his, if you will, element chart uh, position comes from the earth. And the earth itself had no template. Now, that's number one. Number two of the revelation in this division is that though man is the only thing in all of the world that was created, but not by the spoken word of God, as was the cattle, the fish, the fowl, the firmaments, the stars, the moon, the waters, the rivers, the rocks, the trees, the herb yielding fruit, all of that was simply spoken by God's word. God said, let it be, and, there, and it was so. But not man. Man was not spoken into existence. Man was formed out of the dust of the earth. Man was created from something that was already in existence, and that was the earth itself. However, component of item number two of the revelation is that man is the only thing that was created that had a template in pre-creation. When God said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness, that was the only thing of everything that was created that had an image or a template prior to creation. And though we find that there are trees in heaven, there are rivers, there are winged, if you will, birds, I suppose, in heaven, uh, but the tree and the rivers of heaven had no template. They were, they were not made in the image of anything that was in pre-creation. While man was not spoken into existence, number one, but number two, created from the earth itself, but the template for the creation of man was the image and likeness of God himself, which did exist in pre-creation, if I'm explaining that. So we're very excited today about the opportunity to share these words with you. There's a third component I want to share with you. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But before I get to that, now it may take another teaching, it may take another segment, because we're on a, a limited time frame here uh, with what we have, the opportunity to, to express. And I, and I need a, a, measure, a measured amount of time to make fully uh, component number three of what I'm now declaring as, as a, a new and a, an additional revelation that Almighty God in his generous spirit has given to us as the people of Atla for our faithfulness. And I took the time in the last segment to pray and give thanks to everybody who has supported uh, me as the servant of the Lord to bring us to this point. But one of the things that we want to do now before we get to the third component and the, the final component of this revelation is this is that we are teaching these messages for personal growth. 
Um, at, at one point, uh, one would consider that the Bible was not a place where you personally uh, acquired a greater IQ. It's just recently that I'm beginning to promote that. People thought that you were born with an expanded or with a measured or an, a, an IQ status. But the Bible is not the place where you went if you wanted to increase that. And scientists have long since, and psychiatrists and psychologists have long since understood, uh, and educators as well, have understood that the IQ of, every, of an individual can be increased, can be greatly increased. But the Bible was not the place, nor the church, if you will, was not the place, or at least in the Christian understanding and in many lower or basic, basic Christian understandings. Um, in our studies, we have discovered that there are a large number of levels at which we find that the human experience or the human eye or the IQ, IQ can, be, uh, exp but, uh, can be expanded. And a lot of these have been derivatives and, and ill-gotten so out of the Christian faith or out of the Jewish faith or out of some other faith as well. For instance, if you have a, a group such as the Masonic Order, uh, Masons, or who believe that there's a degree of knowledge that can be transferred or can be acquired through certain spiritual experiences. I don't agree with that, uh, but what it does do, it, it validates what I'm expressing with respect to the fact that uh, I'm now saying that the IQ, that there are people that Almighty God wants to increase their IQ, but not just their IQ and personal growth, but to increase their professional development that we might be better able to interact with this enormous universe and creation that God has put in place. You know, we have not tapped uh, the, the vastness of the, of, the, of the universe. Now, Adam, the Adamic world, Adam did have access to it, but it was all lost when death was pronounced. But there's so many things about creation as it stands that we've not been able to tap. And there are a large number of people who are on a lower scale of being able to tap into or and to make, if you will, use of creation and, and how it, for instance, you'll notice that one of the cherished elements of planet Earth is gold. But gold doesn't grow on trees. Gold is formed as a product of the earth interacting with itself and its core. But it is, it is much lauded and talked about as one of the precious elements that God himself very much loves and enjoys. Gold, he loves it. But man had to first come to an, an understanding how to interact with that, how to dig for it, how to mine for it, and how to find gold, and then how to refine it once he has found it, and what he mixes gold with in terms of to make it pliable or durable. There are so many other things about earth, of the elements that God has created, that we've not completely tapped into. So our, our, our IQ needs to grow. And then just for the, the purpose of being able to maintain the earth, and, and through that, we might have, as I talked to you about righteousness in another segment, about having righteousness then giving us power. Where God said to Adam once he was created that you have dominion over everything that I've created that had no template and was only by my word. I'm giving you power over the fish, the fowl, and everything else God gave. We, we've lost that as well. But in the creation or development of our IQs, our spirit, professional development, we'll have more power to uh, ability to do that. And having said that, now as I, I and I will move to in our next teaching, not now, the third component and the most important, if you will. Well, certainly of uh, the Trinity, there's a Trinity of components of this revelation. I've gone to uh, Trinity not one, Trinity two, Trinity number three. I'll get to or the third component, if you will. I'm sure I do not have the time to fully express it in the limited amount of time we have left in this segment. But let me set the stage. The priority of Jesus 
the priority of Jesus, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the priority of Jesus was to maintain, if you will, the power of God's word, that nothing but nothing should ever change God's word. That was his priority. And while suffering does determine a level of righteousness, it is our support for God's word and for the maintenance of God's word. The prioritizing of God's word by an individual is also righteousness and perhaps a higher form of righteousness. So the priority of God of Jesus is to maintain God's word. While Jesus came in the form of a man, which is also in the image and likeness of God, it would not it would be unseemly for the Savior to come in the image of a tree or the image of a cow or the image of a whale. Because the template for man himself is God. So the Savior would not, it would not have been appropriate for the Savior to come in the likeness of a cow. And the cow starts talking and say, I'm going to get on the cross and save you. You see how ridiculous that is. But my, what I, the reason why I'm making that the ridiculous point is that I want, I want to e emphasize that the priority of Jesus is to maintain the image and likeness of God. And in doing so, he must maintain God's word. The moment Jesus the moment Jesus diverts from the word of God, he diverts from the image and the likeness of God. He diverts from the entire purpose and priority of creation itself. So it, it, we need to be important and, and, and informed about that. And you, you'll remember that Jesus told John the baptizer that our purpose is to fulfill all righteousness. And, 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 that's, and another teaching as I follow up on these, these teachings um, and this revelation, I'm going to go through a series of teachings where Jesus teaches the law. And boy, does he teach it. I mean, when Jesus teaches the law, I, it is awesome to watch how Jesus teaches the law that was given by Moses. That it is fascinating. And the my my so when I, I get to that I'll, 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 there's a sermon on the mount that is really uh, it, it with the understanding now that I am now pr uh, promoting uh, gives I believe a, a even greater importance to this revelation that God is now bringing forth. But the our personal growth I've asked. There are there people out there who believe that they can increase their personal strength and their growth by as much as 30 percent? You know, whatever you're doing right now that, let's say, for instance, you're operating in a professional way and you're, let's say, you're, you're operating at, let, let's say, 40 percent of capacity measured by and compared to other, others within the human species but that you can increase that by another 30 percent, getting as much as 70 percent out of your present existence. And I, I, I know that this is important for me to teach this because that there, what, what I, what is, let me rephrase that. What I believe is that there are people out there who know that they can increase, that they don't have to stay mediocre as they are. I mean, I, I came out of a, 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 a very strong Baptist tradition that if I had not been seeking the Lord in a more passionate way, I would not be teaching you this because I would not have grown to the level of the experience whereby I, I would have the professional strength or the spiritual IQ to bring, bring forth revelations. I mean, I think if I had stayed good, a good old Baptist as I was, and I'm not here to beat up on Baptists, but I'm not here to try to miss them either if I need to say something. If I'd stayed a good old Baptist, I don't even think I would have ever been trusted with the vision of Otla. 
The vision of Allah requires a very trusted servant who will never change his character. The vision of Allah that God gave 30 years ago requires one who God could trust with something and would not change his character and would not fail in the face of adversity. I, I truly believe if I had stayed Baptist or maybe even Pentecostal or Methodist, that I was not, God would have, I would have never known that I didn't get the vision of outlaw. Somebody else would have it. And I, I wouldn't be able to even understand it. But it's, it's because of, 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 of seeking God's word and, the, and the, the spiritual IQ that God has given a revelation and that God has given a vision of outlaw. And one that can be trusted because you're not intimidated by the world or any of its powers. So I want you to hold on. I've got an exciting uh, part two of God said coming up in our next segment. It's going to be very exciting. It's coming up in our next teaching. I will not be able to bring this teaching. Now I don't have the time and I need to close out with some things that are also scheduled to take place in this broadcast. But uh, I give God the praise and I give God the thanks for the opportunity to have shared with you today. I will return with part two and part three of the Trinity. But let me have a word of prayer. In your name, Jesus, we glorify you for allowing this day to happen. We praise you for all the other revelations and there, there are a list of them, prophecies that have come out of this ministry over the past 40 years. We give your name the glory and the thanks. And we praise that everybody that's to, that is to be rooted out, fished, and brought into great power of understanding spiritually, physically, financially, health-wise, and otherwise, because of this word, let it be so. In your name, Jesus, hallelujah and amen. All right, Mr. Engineer. A true man of God. Pastor is a man of God who gives his life to the Lord. He fears no man and he chooses his battles. He is a very generous man, a loving man, and he truly loves the children in the Utla schools. He cares about their well-being and he cares about the members of the church pastor is my father and I am his son. He only hopes for the best for me. He cares about my well-being and he is interested in how I am doing. He prays for me. I am a really, truly blessed person. He is a man of integrity and honor. Pastor is a man who I trust and there are not many people who I trust. He helps me when I'm in need. He does not like to see me in hardships or in pain. Pastor is not a man who moans or gets huffy. He is a strong man, a man of power. He's a man who you will never understand because of what he has been through. What he has done for the people is far beyond what anyone can imagine. That is why I love him, and I know he is a true man of God. I put my life in his hands. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Your son, Canaan, from the UK. In front of you, there is a crystal ball. What do you see? Very dark. But once the dark itself has done as done in the days of the Bible, in the beginning of creation, has darkness itself cannot maintain. It, 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 it is not a consistent, is not eternal. It just isn't. It just isn't. And in that ball, I see the darkness. But once that darkness fades and it no longer has its power, 
light will flood and flourish humanity. And Jeremy, I'm glad you asked the question because I think a large part of humanity, uh, the unity of humanity on planet Earth has to do with the dark black man finally realizing where he needs to kneel and pray, what he needs to do in order to be able to integrate himself into society. And as a result of that, uh, it'll bring global, global peace in many ways. Listen, here in America, politics in America is always by black and white. The Republican Party, Democrat Party, Democrats got the black people on their side and Republicans don't. And all the issues are around race. But once that darkness, that blackness, that is removed as an, as an existential, if you will, part of our existence, light will come. But it isn't going to be easy, and I'm not sure how long. The hair on my arms, Pastor Manning, is standing up. <laughs> Just from listening to that. It's a great way to end our conversation. I know that you have to, I know that you have to leave. Um, may I say that you are a true gentleman, uh, and it's an absolute pleasure uh, chatting to you. 